What are the Teletubbies? How is the sun alive? What is new new? Who built the speakers? These are the four mysteries that linger around the show Teletubbies and in this video I intend to solve each and every one of them. If you're new, hello, please watch the other two conspiracy videos. Please, if you want. In this video, I will tell you of the many mysteries that marvel around the marvellous world of Teletubbies. Starting with, what exactly are they? Teletubbies! The Teletubbies is a famous children's cartoon show that teaches learning by showing videos of other children doing things, presented by their cartoonish animatronic hosts. These hosts can link in with radio waves sent from a magical windmill and witness videos of children doing things. That would give you quite a good idea that they are pieces of machinery. However, we also see them do basic cognitive skills, sleep and reproduce. So it is unlikely that they are either. So maybe they could be both. They are some form of creature that has been mixed in with some form of robot. But then again, robots need builders. Who could have built those robots? Maybe it was humans. Maybe humans built these robots around fellow humans. It is unsure whether these robotic shells resembled the Teletubbies or if they later evolved to look like that. But I believe the Teletubbies are machineries with humans trapped inside. But Teletubbies is a completely fictional universe, right? It has no connection to humans whatsoever. To that I say, you can see rabbits in the Teletubbyverse. This is a clear connection to real life humans. But then that does make us ask, why are there rabbits and humans on this different planet? Now, that is a very good question, impatient viewer, but I have a very good answer as always. The answer is climate change and SpaceX. I believe these humans were modified with machinery so that they could go out and explore the glorious galaxies. They were looking to find new habitable environments by scanning them and they had antennas built in so that they could communicate back to the humans of their findings. One day they found a planet that seemed to be habitable. So humans sent out tests. They sent out rabbits to see if the rabbits would survive. And the rabbits, as we know, survived. However, these brilliant bunnies could only populate the planet because they burrowed. Bunnies burrow underneath the Earth's bricky box so that they can live underground. They are one of many animals that does this, however that might have been integral to their survival. Why do I say that? Oh, only two reasons. First of all, every single creature that lives on the Teletubbies planet, besides the baby sun, but that doesn't really live on the planet, lives underground. The speakers, they come out from the ground. Bunnies, they burrow underground. Teletubbies and Nunu, they live inside of a hill underneath the ground. 
they need an elevator to get out, or doors. So this makes me believe that there is a connection between living underground and surviving in Teletubby land, which is the official name of it, but that name is stupid, so I am going to call it the Royal District of Nunu Tubsworth. Oh right, back to the story. So, as you are aware, these creatures were able to survive this harsh climate because they burrowed underground. But do I have any proof how that helped them survive? Yes, I do. And that, as all things do, circle back to babies and the sun. And babies that are the sun. You see, this sun is sentient. And the only way this sun would be sentient is if it was in it was in the district of another solar star. That would help give it the the necessary heat to sustain life. That's life being the sun itself. There are a few ways this would work. This could work if Teletubby Land was part of a double orbit, which is around a figure eight style thing where it orbits one star and then links into another star's orbit. It could work because the Teletubby Sun is what the planet is orbiting around, but there is another star that is also orbiting around the Teletubby Sun. However, there have been no evidence of figure eight orbits, so that leads me to believe it is the second option, quite rightfully. And, and that would usually mean that there is a second sunrise around four hours later than the first one, which we do not see in regular Teletubby episodes. So, this leads me to believe that in the Teletubby's quest to make the planet as habitable as possible, they got rid of the other large star that would spin around their solar system so that it would be bearable and not boilingly hot. However, this would cause the eventual death of the sun the Teletubbies are orbiting, which is not good. So they needed to find another way to sustain its life. Why am I talking about this? Oh right, because things don't only need heat to survive, they also need to eat to survive. So this star would often suck up the other living things on the Teletubbies planet. It would suck these creatures up, so these creatures would resort to living underneath the ground so that they could survive the suckening. So this is why everything lives underground. But also, the Teletubbies go out of the ground. How can this be explained? Well, obviously, just like all things, it can be explained with the power of love. The Teletubbies often kiss, hug and love each other very much. This is sweet and expected because it's a children's show. The narrator even points this out, how much they love each other and other things. However, what if there was a point to this? Not just because they've evolved to be such simple organisms that they deteriorate into feeling only one emotion in such extreme measures. Maybe it's because they need love to power the windmill outside. Whenever they do their big hug after the start of the ritual runaround, the windmill churns. And when the windmill turns, it expels out pink stars. Pink is the colour of hearts and hearts are love. So this means that the Teletubbies are generating love energy. Why would this be? Why would they risk going outside where the sun can suck them up just to love each other? It is because the love is making the sun not suck them up which allows them to go outside, which allows them to do things like use their favourite items. The love energy that they would generate would churn this windmill and then go into the sun to keep it alive. 
because as we all know, love is the strongest force on earth. Stronger than eating or having heat. If somebody loves you enough, you will survive just fine. If they have a magical windmill that can churn that love into energy, that is. Which, sadly, is only text for futuristic aliens on apocalyptic versions of our universe. <laughs> Analysis of Nunu. Hello, it's me, Animated Max. I've just eaten some spicy food, so I want to get this done very quickly before I breathe fire. So, Nunu is a sentient vacuum that accompanies the Teletubbies on their many misadventures inside of the hill they live in. He seemingly has bloodshot eyes, but he's actually just very messy when he eats strawberry jam on toast. The first thing to note about Nunu is that he hardly ever goes outside. The first time he ever did was in episode 56 of series 1 of the revamped series of Teletubbies. And even when he does go outside, it's only for a brief minute. It's almost like Nunu is afraid of going outside. What could cause him to be afraid? Possibly the massive sun that would eat him if he exited the building for too long. But that doesn't stop the Teletubbies. The Teletubbies frolic about all they want. Well, as I've already said, that is because the Teletubbies are able to generate love the most powerful force on Earth. And as we all know, robots are heartless monsters that are incapable of feeling any emotion, including love. This would imply that Nunu is 100% robot, 0% sentient. He is not a living creature of any kind. He was entirely man-made. Understand? Great. Nunu is a robot. That should be the end of it. Right? You're wrong. Robots require rights, builders. And I was doubtful that Nunu was a creation of the humans. Nunu was designed to stay inside. How would humans have known to implement that? And whilst I'm at it, it couldn't have been humans who built the hill. And the Teletubbies couldn't have built it, as they would have been sucked away during the construction process. Okay. I thought about this for a while, and I've come to the conclusion that the hill was actually originally built underground by some other form of alien race. Then the sun ate away at the surface, causing this hill to rise up and be on the surface level. This hill was made out of some super strong underground material that could withstand sun attacks. However, they didn't want to be trapped in here forever, so they sent out one of their few Nunu bots to see if the outside was safe to inhabit, which reported negative. So instead, they burrowed underground. The only one that didn't was the remaining Nunu bot, because it was a robot. And then they released, created evolved into the speakers that we see in the modern day. I like this hypothesis because it helps explain why we see Tubby Toast and Tubby Custard inside of the hill but never see any evidence of it outside. It's because it's extrapolated from the inside core. Oh hello doodly, my old friend. Okay, so there are still some flaws in our story we've been building. Mainly, this trailer that came out one month ago for a new Teletubbies series premiering on Netflix. All standard, right? Teletubbies want to expand their brand by introducing it with another company and bringing it to a whole new generation, just like they did last time. But this revamped, revamped Teletubbies series trailer had a few details I noticed. Mainly, the sun is entirely different. And I would like to say it's because 
the old actor is fully grown up now, or it was entirely a stylistic decision, something deep down inside of me knows that this has a hidden story behind of it. So, I decided to watch the new Teletubbies series. It isn't out yet, or at least not at the time of recording. So I decided to watch the old Teletubbies series, and I also got nothing. So I decided to watch the in-between Teletubbies series, and I found series 1, episode 57, where Tinky Winky talks to a sentient star in the night sky. Odd, but this helped me piece together the entire story. When humans discovered this planet, they realised that there was a second star orbiting the first star. Little did they know, both of the stars were sentient. So they got rid of one of the stars and sent it off far into space. One night, the Teletubbies discovered it off in space, singing broadcasts it had heard from their planet, probably. And then, a few months, years, decades, however long later, this star came close and destroyed the other star. 